Welcome everybody, I'm Ted Earhart, and this is my first attempt at an educational video. It's something I've been wanting to do for a number of years. I just haven't sat down to figure out the best uh, video software. And uh, anyway, we find ourselves in the midst of the global COVID-19 pandemic, and we're not really meeting with clients, and we're largely working remotely. Uh, however, I am in the office currently. Uh, I thought this might be a good opportunity to sit down, figure this out, and speak to some issues that are especially relevant given the circumstances. So let's kick this off by talking a little bit about the Federal Reserve and specifically what it means when the Fed is injecting money into the economy or more specifically when they're buying bonds. What does that actually mean? If we take a look at a recent headline which was just several weeks ago in the Wall Street Journal, this is right you know, in the beginning of March, uh, the Western world seemed to wake up to the fact that this uh, disease was going to be a big deal and really, uh, really hit the economy hard. So the markets got choppy and the Federal Reserve ultimately responded uh, in mid-March and said, we are going to step up to the plate and inject $500 billion into the system by buying treasury securities, in other words, government bonds and $200 billion in mortgage-backed securities. So I just want to kind of unpack what does this actually mean, why is the Fed doing it, and how does it ultimately help the financial system and therefore businesses and consumers alike. So to, get, to grasp this, you also need to kind of understand how a, a bank works at the most basic level. So this is true from anything from your local community bank all the way up to the biggest banks in the world. Uh, they all work in a similar fashion. Basically, just imagine this. If you wanted to start a bank, what you would need to do is put a little bit of your own money into it. Uh, we'll say $100,000 in this case. And then you'd go out and raise deposits from people that want to set up checking and savings accounts. So let's say you raise $900,000 plus the equity you're putting into the bank. You have a million dollars of total assets. Now, the way a bank makes money is it takes most of its deposits or most of its uh, capital and invests that money or loans it out to businesses, consumers, whoever wants to borrow. The bank earns a profit by charging a higher rate of interest on its loan portfolio uh, in comparison to what it pays its depositors. So say, for example, on average, obviously rates are extremely low right now, but let's just say the bank pays on average about 1% on its deposits and it earns on average 4% on its loan portfolio. That's a 3% spread and that's how the bank ultimately makes money. But what's also important to understand about banks is at any given time, they only have a fractional amount of their deposits in liquid cash or reserves. And in the United States, that's typically around 10%. And I'm oversimplifying this for any of you banking experts out there, so just bear with me. This is for example purposes. Uh, so by and large, banks just have a tiny fraction or a small fraction of their deposits liquid at any given time. You can quickly see how this can be problematic during periods of extreme financial stress, like right now, uh, when all of a sudden, you know, people are getting laid off, businesses are losing all their revenue, especially like things like restaurants and so forth that are closed. Of course, what are they doing with their deposits? They're drawing them down to pay bills and just try to try to keep things going. That's obviously a big problem if everybody does that at the same time and the bank only has, you know, again, a fraction of its deposits in reserves. So where does that leave that? Uh, where does that leave the bank? How do they raise cash to uh, make good on their deposits or to lend money to other people who, you know, banks and business or excuse me, consumers and businesses right now might want to draw on credit lines to, to create liquidity? How does the bank get the cash? Well, one of the ways they can do that is they can sell part of their assets. Uh, a lot of banks will have things like government bonds on their books, and they can sell those to create cash and lend the money out. That works, of course, in normal times. It's no big deal. They can just go to the open market and liquidate. Uh, but the problem is when everybody is trying to do it at the same time, uh, there simply aren't enough buyers to be on the other side of the transaction, which means prices go down. 
and that can create massive problems in the financial system if all of a sudden the value of these assets goes down you can very quickly uh, be in a situation where your total assets is less than your total liabilities and then a bank becomes insolvent and that can risk the whole financial system so when you read the history books about bank runs and depressions and so forth especially in the in the 19th century uh, this is what this is what happened uh, all the depositors came at the same time and there was no buyer of last resort to put cash in the hands of banks and uh, allow them to meet their obligations so we set up the central bank which in the United States is called the Federal Reserve and what they principally one of their principal duties is to stand at and be what's known as the buyer of last resort remember the Fed controls the money supply uh, which means they can literally print money they can create money out of thin air so when everyone is trying to unload bonds to create cash and therefore help businesses and consumers who need loans like right now uh, the Fed is literally the only institution in the world that can step up with the buying power uh, to to buy bonds directly from banks or or in the open market get the liquidity in the system to keep the financial keep the financial system going so when you read about the Fed buying bonds this is what they're doing they're literally creating money and getting it out into the bank's hands uh, by way of asset purchases in an effort to keep liquidity flowing through the system if we didn't have the Fed what would happen as we talked about a little bit earlier is all these bonds all these assets that banks are trying to sell at the same time would go down in value you could see and then you could see some major problems with uh, banks basically going under so the Fed is an amazingly powerful institution and this is why it matters so much and why you read about it in financial media so that's just a little kind of educational piece on the Federal Reserve why it is so influential um, it's really an, an amazing concept the central bank if you want to spend some time reading about it appreciate you tuning in to my first educational video here if you're interested in any other topics uh, things that that you're curious about feel free to let me know and I'll try to hit those as we go forward thanks for watching